So I thought that we could start our tour here in Christchurch Yard. Um, it's a very important venue for 18th century Dublin. It was maybe the centre of everything, a bustling uh, little neighbourhood full of printers, um, taverns, inns, and also the law courts and lawyers all lived around here. At the time, there was lots of houses right up against the cathedral, um, including a house about there where the uh, Neil family lived, uh, or the O'Neill family, they're called both. At the start of the 1700s, they were selling instruments, they were printing music, they're incredibly enthusiastic amateur musicians. There was no particular concert hall that was suitable for their purposes at the time. So they used to play in different pubs and different taverns. They eventually made um, lots of money. It was a very um, inclusive community, so they had lots of people from different sectors of society, uh, Catholic, Protestant, rich and poor, people from lots of different backgrounds all making music together. And the aim was to make a charitable music society. The money made from that raised money for hospitals all around the city and also raised money to build Fishamble Street uh, Music Hall or Neil's Music Hall which was the venue where Handel performed most of his works when he was in Dublin. And when he was here you could also come to Christchurch Yard to buy your tickets for Handel's performances. So here we are on our next stop on the tour, outside Fishamble Street. Neil's Music Hall, which is the place where Handel did all of his performances in Dublin, um, including the first performance of Messiah. There's very little left of the original hall. We have this red wall behind, which is um, part of the original fabric of the building. There's also a gable above, um, which might have been part of the original theatre. It was eventually turned into a, a metal works, um, and now it's an apartment block, as you can see, which is a little bit of a shame. But this is where it all kicked off, um, here on Fishamble Street. So many people wanted to come to the first performance that they had to have a one-way system up the street and they had to arrange um, people to leave the hoops of their skirts behind and their swords at home to make more room for more people for this charity event. They even had to knock out a couple of, of windows to make some ventilation for the space as well. I'm sitting outside what remains of Smock Alley Theatre. Yeah. 
Smock Alley Theatre, which was built in 1662 and was the Theatre Royal in Dublin. It was the theatre connected with Dublin Castle, so the main theatrical events associated with Dublin Castle took place here during Handel's time in the city. Here we are in Copper Alley, which isn't the most salubrious location, and it wasn't in the 18th century either. But it was an entrance into O'Neill's music hall just here. It was also the dwelling place of Darky Kelly, a famous Dublin prostitute who was uh, accused of murder and was burnt at the stake in 1761. We're standing outside Dublin Castle, which was the centre of administrative power of Britain in Ireland in the 18th century. It was also the home to the Irish State Music, a band of musicians who worked here, who played at balls, at ceremonies. Um, there were six trumpeters and between eight and ten um, string musicians and wind players and harpsichordists too. And they would have been the musicians who worked for Handel, especially Matthew Dubourg, who's the leader of Handel's orchestra in Ireland. Behind me is the location of the Crow Street Music Hall, which was built in 1731 and was home of the Academy of Music. The Academy of Music were a society of musicians who subscribed to all of Handel's works, and this would have been the first place in Dublin to hear Handel's music. In the 1730s, this was quite an artistic neighbourhood, and just around the corner in Founds Court, Madame Violante had something called her commodious booth, 
She was an acrobat and tightrope walker, and she was shut down by the city of Dublin for exposing her brawny parts. Francesco Gemignani was perhaps the greatest composer to ever live in Ireland. He was an amazing violinist and in approximately in this spot in Dame Lane he had his great room where he used to give lessons to the public. As well as giving violin lessons, Gemignani also used to sell works of art to the public. This is the final stop of our walking tour. We're outside St. Andrew's Church, which used to be St. Andrew's Round Church. This was the home of the Mercer's Hospital charity concerts. They used to play Handel's music here from 1736. It was one of the first times you could hear pieces like Zadok the Priest and the Coronation Anthems was in this location. It's also the location of Handel's first Dublin concert. He was invited as soon as he got off the boat to come and accompany his own music just here. For the final years of his life, Gemignani lived just around the corner from here on College Green with his student Matthew de Bourg. He spent the final years writing a treatise, the greatest work of his whole life, and this was stolen from him by an Irish maid. It's said that this hastened his demise. <laughs> 